So yes. um, first things first, we watched on Sunday mm -hmm. the first race of the year for MotoGP. Yes. You also watched a sprint on Saturday. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't because I was working hard. Okay. It's hard <laughs> at work. I didn't have the time, but you watched it. So yes. how did you like it? I mean, also now compared to have seen the full race now. Yes. I think it's super interesting. I'm, I've never seen a MotoGP race or neither one of us had seen a full race before. So this mm -hmm. was our first experience, the race in Qatar. Um, some of the names were more familiar, especially through because you've made the video kind of breaking down MotoGP. But I feel like there's still so much to learn about it, which I'm excited about to watch more of it mm -hmm. and learn more about it as we see more races. Because there was definitely a couple questions that come up that came up, like different terms that I didn't quite understand yet or wasn't familiar with. But overall, I think it's absolutely insane. Like the speed, like the acceleration we've already talked about, it's as fast as an F1 car, mm -hmm. which is absolutely... Yeah, from zero to 60 or yeah, 100, yeah. It's absolutely insanity. And then, but still the speeds that they drive. Mm -hmm. So I think top speeds were like 350 mm -hmm. um, kilometers per hour, which is crazy fast considering yeah, you're on two wheels. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you can also see when they show like replays and stuff like that, especially when they go through the corner. Obviously, we can see that they're touching yes. the the ground, right? And that's like everyone kind of knows that because mm -hmm. that's what why they're wearing the protective stuff and stuff like that. But I think what is also so interesting, like how much they're also like on the side of the tire, right? Yes. It's crazy because one of the reasons why they go through the like track slower than an F1 car is because they don't have as much grip, right? Mm -hmm. You first of all only have two tires yes. to grip, uh, to find grip with. And then also like when they go through these corners, they're like on the very edge, half on the side of the tire. And it's absolutely crazy. It's crazy. Like I remember seeing pictures of them, of course, like mm -hmm. leaning into mm -hmm. the corners but I had no idea how low they go that they actually purposely, I guess, touch or not touch. Well, I mean, I don't know if they touch it the whole time or like if they... I think they will probably avoid touching it, yes. but they're going to get as close as they can because I'm sure touching it might make you slower. True, very That's true. friction, right, that you're building up. Yes. So, yeah. so I thought that was very interesting to see that. It was also really cool when you watch it. We ended up watching it on Max because it's available here in the U.S. to watch on Max, which I think is amazing yeah for for now it's for free so if you do have hbo max and you're in the u.s you it's know included check it out in your subscription, subscription if yeah. you pay for it already um but yeah i was really surprised i i love that they showed the angles mm -hmm. at which they're like they show like a speedometer a lot of times so you know kind of how fast they're going they're showing the braking information and then also that they're like their angle at 60 degrees was like one the top, top numbers, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was just crazy. Yeah. And then also, yes, we, we joked about how funny they look in their suits because they can barely move. They're mm -hmm. like robots. Mm -hmm. But it's also impressive that with so little, I mean, it looks like little protection. They're so protected because we saw one of the guys in the main race, mm -hmm. in the feature race, um, Jack Miller, the Australian. Mm -hmm. He fell off the bike, but he ended up getting back on mm -hmm. and racing, which I think was it's, it's mind boggling at the speeds that they go, that they can just fall off shake it off yeah. and get back on the bike so i think in my research of moto gp they were talking about they have like quote unquote i i'm not quite sure exactly what the term is i think it's low falls and mm -hmm. high falls mm -hmm. so low falls is essentially kind of what happened to him he i, I think he leaned too far and then he just slid mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and those are very uh those are the type of accidents that you see more often in uh, moto gp now mm -hmm. and also those are the quote unquote preferred accidents mm -hmm. because the high ones are essentially that is when like the drivers catapulted over yes. and that is way more dangerous and i believe there was a change made to the bike mm -hmm. that is preventing that from happening oh, as often as it okay. used to but nice. I, I don't know exactly what the change was yes. i just remember reading about it yeah so Overall, I thought for my first experience, it, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. There was less overtaking than I expected. I thought there would be a lot more on track action, mm -hmm. but it was nonetheless still super exciting. I also like that it's short. Yeah. You know, the sprint race was 11 laps. The main event ended up being only 21 laps because they had to redo the warm-up lap because there was a delay. Yeah, there was essentially someone who held up the start because there was a... a something went wrong with his bike yeah Raul Fernandez with Trackhouse, he ended up yeah. having to wave it down and they 
everybody had to stop. He mm -hmm. ended up getting on his reserve bike. Yes. And then he started the warm up lap from the pit lanes, but then started the race from the back from position 23, yeah. essentially. And then he ended up coming 15th. No, he ended up um, DNFing. Oh, he DNFed? Oh, yeah. so the other track house became fi uh, came yes. in 15th. Yeah, okay. so Raul, he ended up having to DNF. Uh. He Eventually, he ended up in the pits and he just couldn't yeah. continue, which so, is such a bummer because I also thought it was so cool, which I had told you, mm -hmm. which I found out during the sprint race, is that track house is a brand new team. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if, if I understood it correctly, the owner of it or one of the owners, he saw a MotoGP race last year in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. He's American. He saw it and he's like, well, I want a team. So he created a team like it's with Abrilla. So it's like there's um, big names behind it and there's a yeah. lot of sponsorships, of course. But it's kind of nuts that he within. Yeah six plus months he created his own he MotoGP like, team and there are two drivers on the track or two riders on a track yeah yeah I mean we'll see how it goes right yes. but it's uh, it's kind of it's kind of wild that some people have like money like that out yes. there <laughs> um but yeah I think it's really cool um so the sprint race as well as the main event mm -hmm. was won by last year's defending mm -hmm. champion oh no, no only the main event yeah right? so the sprint race was won by Jorge Martin Jorge. Yeah. Jorge. <laughs> One of the commentators kept saying Jorge. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would I would say Jorge, Jorge, Jorge. Martin. Yeah, I think so too. And then Brad Binder was the second place. He's the guy from South Africa. Yeah. And correct. then the driver, um, oh, uh, um, Alexei Esper. Espargaro mm -hmm. he's the one that ended up in third and apparently he was also a favorite for the main event however he ended up in eighth mm -hmm. at the end which was I guess maybe unexpected mm -hmm. um, but then yes last year or the last two driver champion rider champion winner um, ben Francesca Bagnaia <laughs> Bagnaia <Bagnella. laughs> um, he yeah. ended up winning the main event by also like he led it from the beginning all yeah. the way to the end he had like his his lead kept varying so binder was pretty quite on him yeah but he was like steadily increasing yeah it. there was no yeah. like real fight mm -mm. for it so whenever he noticed like oh he's coming a little closer he stepped on it a little, mm -hmm. little bit more but he seemed fairly comfortable mm -hmm. i also was really interested in watching pedro acosta who's the rookie yes on this year's track as mm -hmm. he did so well or he did well in the sprint race i forgot how what position he ended up in but then in the main event, he ended up at one point, he was up by fourth, mm -hmm. like almost competing for the podium. But then there was an issue. The commentators were guessing it was grip and then also like uh, the pump handle or something like mm -hmm. that. There were some issues because they saw him changing grip on some of the straights mm -hmm. or adjusting things. Mm -hmm. So it might have not just been tire wear or maybe inexperience, but also like a technical thing. It might have been like a combination of both because like he was definitely pushing. And yes. so that led to some cool overtakes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he also seemed to be that is the scary thing also with MotoGP. They're flying down these yeah. like the track so fast and then they're like because the grip is giving out. So they're mm -hmm. shaking just a little bit. So that's quite intense it is and i feel like that also makes it exciting mm -hmm. because as the race continues you see mm -hmm. it more and more happening here mm -hmm. and there and it's like is the dry, is the rider gonna be able to catch the bike or mm -hmm. is it gonna slip away from them yeah so I, I thought it was definitely interesting i'm curious to see more and different mm -hmm. um tracks um mark marquez is back this year which he I'm, ended fourth yeah right? he ended up fourth so i'm excited to see him because he's mm -hmm. on a new bike and he's back from injury and mm -hmm. i mean he's one of the bigger names in the sport and we've missed his era since this is our first MotoGP season mm -hmm. but it seems to be an interesting one and even a commentator said this seems to be one of the the most exciting era of MotoGP as of late yeah. not saying it never been this it has never been this exciting but mm -hmm. it's definitely been or it's getting to be really exciting yeah and it's it's cool that we're right there with it you know yes yeah. um 